Hi everybody and welcome to this little spring tutorial and we're gonna just do a little bit of playing in our journal and if you saw from the email or or wherever uh, I mentioned an art journal and these are custom made this is they're really fun because you can customize the paper that you put in here and you can customize the cover and it's something that you've created, something that you've made, and the free tutorial is also here on my YouTube channel, so you can check that out. But um, we're going to start off today by uh, playing with a little bit of spring colors. This isn't exactly um, what you would call well thought out. As you can see, my, <laughs> my quote kind of took on a life of its own. I didn't mark anything out. I was just playing. This is my journal, so... Um, you can kind of experiment and see what works for you and what doesn't. And if you can see here too, I've gone in with a little bit of um, white gel pen, I think, and it just really didn't show up very well. And I think it had a little bit of a problem um, skipping around on the page too. So this is a place for you to play. If you don't have an art journal, just grab a piece of, of paper. Mixed media paper will work fine. We're not going to saturate the page. Just as long as you have something that will accept uh, water media and a pen, you'll be good. You can even do this with acrylic, really. You can, um, I think I've got some acrylic pieces in here or in this other journal that I can show you real quick that like this. This was actually um, a big mess up and so I just kind of went over this really quick and really sloppy with acrylic and I let it dry and I came back to it on a different day and then I just kind of sketched this on top of it. So this is what your journal is supposed to be about. This is about trying out things and playing and really it's for your eyes only. So what I wanted to do today was something in watercolor. I am using this palette. This is a Jane Davenport palette and it's the bright palette. And I like it because the colors are bright. Reminds me of spring, especially this uh, Jiminy green color. Um, you can use anything that you have. You can, like I said, you can even use acrylic and um, we're just going to play. I, I wanted to do this because I wanted to focus mainly on the green colors because of spring and we'll pick out a quote and then you can write around your um, watercolor that you create and then I just go on top and doodle in some flowers and stuff and it's just kind of a relaxing way especially with everything that's going on in this crazy world right now to kind of get away from an escape and just create and and hang out like I said kind of get in the flow and forget about everything else so here are a couple of other ones that I did so that you can see that you can do this in any variation that you want I had started out just painting um, I think I did a yellow layer first I let it dry and then I went in and painted some really watered down watercolor flowers and leaves on top of that and I let that dry and then you can see that I went in and splattered some watercolor, let it dry. And then I just went over it with uh, a pen. And because we'll be working on watercolor that's dry, you don't have to worry about using a pen that's waterproof. So just find a pen that you really, really like, whether it's a Micron pen or whichever. I have this really cool um, platinum pen it's carbon ink pen and I love it because it it um you can get some really fine lines with this this is a really cool pen but it's a little um sketchy if you're working on anything texture so like I said find something that works for you uh, I think I did this with watercolor markers this exercise would work if you have watercolor markers too and I just went in and I painted a bunch of blobs and with my watercolor marker and then I took a brush and wet it and let it bleed and I went over it then with uh, ink pen. It's just playing really so you can do something like this like this. Today I'm going to focus mostly on just doing kind of I'm going to stay in kind of a monochromatic color scheme so I might I might just stick with the blues and the greens like I did here. And I'll quit talking now and actually um, start putting some stuff on paper. So I'll get my other journal and 
this is what we'll start with is our blank page and like I said this is watercolor paper I'm using um, this is actually cold press in here and I have a little spray bottle I'm probably I'll wet the page first and then I'll start laying in in my watercolor and letting it bleed and then we'll let it we'll let it dry and we'll go from there Make sure it's still wet and then you can drop in water and the water will push the paint away and it makes kind of like um almost like a little snowflake effect so you can do things like that or you can really get your page wet up at the top at drop in some color and then tilt it and let it drip and I actually what I might do is I might try that. I'll turn my journal around and I'll do that down here and hold it upside down, let it drip. That way it'll kind of look like stems, flower stems. So I can do something, just drop it in like this. Maybe I'll add a little bit of this color in and then I'll flip it up. Hopefully you can still see this. And I'll just start adding in some water so that it starts running down. This is what I love a lot about watercolor is, you know, really just the spontaneity of it. And it lets you work a lot more intuitively. So, well, you, know, you can even give this a spray if you have a mist, a mister. Um, kind of, there we go. I don't want to oversaturate this, this page because it starts to buckle and then it gets a little bit difficult to work with trying to hold it down flat. And as you can see, I had paint on my finger and made a big blob right here. And what I can do is clean my hand off. So baby wipes are always a good thing to have around. They're great for a quick clean on a brush or obviously wiping off your fingers when you make a mess. And I like to work with a bunch of different supplies, so 
baby wipes are always a good cleanup, and I might be able to get this off just by wetting it a little bit, and I'll take a piece of my paper towel and kind of dab it. Just push down on the paper, don't scrub. You don't want to damage the paper. And my drips have gotten a little bit out of control here, but I can let this dry and I can try the I can try the drips again. It's kind of hard to do it upside down. But I like the kind of abstract look to it. And to me, this is already starting to look a little bit like the sky up here. So I'm just going to kind of reinforce it a little bit. And probably drop in just a little bit more of the yellow up here. And just going to add some water. And anywhere usually that I have hard lines, things like that, I'll kind of hit it with some water. And something else that you can do when this is wet, if you wanted to add a little bit of texture, you can always wad up, loosely wad up a paper towel and it has to be wet and then just kind of lay it into the paint and pick it up like that. And you can get some really cool effects. I've even taken bubble wrap and laid it on top and put a book on top of it, let it dry overnight and then pull it up and you can get some really crazy effects. You can do it with plastic wrap. You can try it with all sorts of different things. Uh, don't forget that you can use salt as well. So if you have a little bit of salt and you want to play around with textures, you can kind of drop it into areas to give it a little bit more interest. And what we'll do is we'll let this dry and then I'll come back to it. And if I feel like adding another layer, then I will. And if not, we can just move right on to putting in our quote and then we can go over it with some more ink and we'll lay in our flowers. And I'll give you some ideas as far as how to source images for flowers and how to kind of make it your own. So I'll see you back here in a second as soon as this is dry. So we're back and this is dry and I like these little textures that I got down here uh, from the salt and just something to note. I did do this, I dried it with a blow dryer and I always feel like it's best if you're going to throw some salt down and you've got like a really wet puddle to let it dry itself and not hit it with a blow dryer only because sometimes what happens is it doesn't get dry underneath the piece of salt and when you go to wipe the salt away it actually smears because the paint is still wet underneath um totally up to you sometimes you can dry it from the other side um but that's happened to me quite a bit um i was able to get this really dry because i didn't put that much salt down and it wasn't super watery in that section um and I only did it in the one area, so it wasn't a big deal. But if you're doing a painting that's, you know, that you're painting to give as a gift or a commission or, or whatever, something like that, that's something to think about. I always let it dry itself before I go to wipe it off. I've done it way too many times, so I've learned my lesson. But what I want to do is I really didn't get the drips that I wanted. So... I wanted to show you something that I think is really pretty cool. And if you happen to have a straw, and I know that these are like a big no-no now, and I don't use this for anything but my artwork. Um, I do have glass straws downstairs, and I know metal and bamboo straws are really popular right now too, but you can always hang on to these plastic straws and use them in your artwork. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So what you want to do is... You want to lay down some water and you want to have enough water so that when you put the straw down there and you blow, it's going to move really easy. So I'm laying in a bunch of water 
and then I'm gonna throw in some paint I'm actually gonna use a darker color I think so that you'll be able to see it okay here we go so just you want to get the straw right down here level with the uh, puddle and give it a little bit you can kind of move the straw as you blow to kind of direct the paint I think that's super fun <laughs> so there's something else that you can try too, and this is something fun to try with kids um, they have a lot of fun doing that but you can get some really cool effects and I don't like this big blobby thing, so I'm just going to kind of soak it up with my paper towel. And I'm going to leave that. I don't mind if it runs onto the other page. But yeah, you can get some really neat effects like that. Well, actually I changed my mind. I'm going to go for the pink. And maybe I'll lay in just some... Just kind of randomly throw some some color down. Probably change it up. The purple. And I just wet my brush and I'm kind of going over some of these edges so that they're not hard edges. So with watercolor, if I were to leave those like that, the edges would dry hard like that. But I can go in and just go along the edge of one side with just some clear water and it really kind of softens it up. I can even drop some more color into those little puddles. And this isn't about being a perfectionist and this isn't about creating something for everybody else to see even though you can obviously I mean uh, but this is about exploring and this is about having fun and just kind of getting away from it all and just playing with your supplies and and having a good time and I kind of like the way that this looks I might drop a little bit more pink in here and here this can be a lot of fun, like I said, just playing and seeing what the paints do. And I'm going to give this one more dry with the blow dryer, and then I'm probably going to go in here and splatter some paint. And I know a lot of people kind of freak out when it comes to like splattering paint because their first thought is I'm going to mess the whole thing up. And the way I look at this kind of um, practice and exercise is that when it comes to fear, this is um, this is the last place that you should have fear. We've got enough of that in our daily lives on the outside when we look at media and and the news and all of that kind of stuff this is playtime and this is a piece of paper and some paint there's nothing to fear so let yourself have some fun and we're gonna splatter paint and you really can't screw it up and I think the actually kind of like the more you put on the page and um, are loose about it and free the better it actually looks and that's just my opinion so I'm gonna dry this and then after that, we're going to splatter some paint. Okay, I think that's pretty dry. And... A little hint as far as telling whether you can tell if something is dry or not is usually if you put your hand on the underneath the underside surface of watercolor paper if it still feels cool then it's wet still so anyway I am probably going to I have not this is I haven't done a dry run of this I am doing this right along with you so that um, 
so that this is real. You want to talk about real time. This is real time. This is me doing this right along with you. So I have done a few of these exercises in my own journal months ago, but, um, I haven't really done any watercolor painting. Um, lately I've been working a lot on the computer and, um, doing a lot of digital work. So I wanted to do something kind of fun and kind of out of the box today. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up some of this purple, this really kind of saturated purple. And I, I'm going to do this with purple and I'm going to do it with the pink. So I'm going to get my brush really nice and wet. And I'm going to go in and kind of roll my brush into the pan. And then I'm just going to hold my finger here and I'm going to tap the brush on my finger. And you can uh, wipe a little bit off on your paper towel if you feel like it's just too wet, which I think mine was. And I like these little dots, these little splatters. Okay, and I'm going to clean that off. Now, if you really want to be daring, clean off, clean off your brush and get it full of water and do the same thing again and, and watch what happens. Um, if I wet some of these splatters, then they'll start to bleed. And of course, I missed entirely. That's okay. So I'm going to go into the pink and do the same thing. And you can do this with a brush, a toothbrush, or a bristle brush if you feel more comfortable doing that. Usually what I do is I take a, um, just kind of a raggedy brush that I have, and I don't seem to have any right here. But for example, I would take, this isn't raggedy, but I would take a bristle brush and I would just kind of flick it like this on my paper. But I'm going to do it this way for now. So here's some more, but this is with the pink. And there. I kind of like that. And I, I still didn't even get in that big water droplet right here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for that. Okay, so I think that's dry. And I wanted to talk a little bit about where to get uh, some references for flowers. You can always look on Pinterest. My suggestion is just look at the flowers. Do not directly copy them ever. Um, if you have plans on copying them, go to a site like Unsplash. And all of the photographs there are copyright free. You can use them for commercial use if you plan on selling your print. It's always a better idea to use things as an inspiration, kind of a jumping off point. If you have plants in your home, take photographs of your of your plants or go for a walk and, and take pictures of whatever's blooming outside. And it won't take you that long to kind of amass your own reference library. So I think what I, I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go over what has already happened here on the page. So I'll probably outline a couple of these, like I said before, and add some, a little bit of uh, grass. And I'm gonna use this pen that I talked about in the beginning. And the reason for that is that uh, it has some really um, fine nib on it and creates a really fine line. And I like the sketchy look I think it goes really well with this whole abstract kind of a feel. I don't want to go in here and lay down a big bold line. I just don't think that, um, I just don't think that it would fit this. And that's my own personal preference, but you can most certainly do whatever you'd like to do. I got these pens from, and I'm not, I'm not paid by Jane. I just really like all of her art supplies, but, uh, this is another Jane Davenport along with the watercolors that I have. And, I love this set because it offers everything from chisel points to super fine um, micro tips. I mean, really super tiny. And there are some also there. Are, I can't speak today. All right. There are also some brush tips in here, too. And these are really great for if, if you do lettering. But I love these because you can get a super fine a super fine line and also you can get um, 
a wide line and, and make some really expressive marks. And these are waterproof too. So if you wanted to, you could always use waterproof markers or pens, lay in your flowers first, and then go over it with your watercolor. Today we're doing it this way. But anything goes, right? So I'm just going to kind of, you know, go over this. And I'm just kind of uh, paying attention to some of the shapes that I see. And just kind of outlining stuff that way, you know. You can always go outside the lines like this too. And I'm not holding, I'm not choking up on the pen up here. I'm holding way back here. And I get more of an erratic loose line when I do that. Which just, like I said, kind of goes with, um, you know, kind of goes with the feel of this painting. do like this kind of loose abstract stuff and like I said I'm gonna save room up here for my quote and I hope you have one picked out or you can wait and see how much room you have at the top when you're finished which is what I'm doing Okay. I think that wraps that up. So I'm going to go pick out a quote and then we're going to go ahead and lay this in. And I'm going to uh, tell you now, I am not a letterer. So what I'll be doing is a little bit of fake calligraphy and I'll show you what I mean in just a second. So I am back now and I have my trusty ruler and I picked out my quote and my quote is going to be the earth laughs in flowers and that's by Ralph Waldo Emerson and you can usually what I do is I'll get a scrap piece of paper and I will write out the quote and figure out how I want it structured so I already know that what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the earth laughs in flowers. And then right here I'll have um, Emerson's name. So I know that I need three lines and then a fourth down here. And because this is in my journal, I am not, in fact, if this camera wasn't on, I wouldn't even use a ruler. <laughs> I would probably just sketch in some lines and then write out the quote in pencil and go in with my pen. But for um, the sake of this tutorial, I'm actually going to do this with a ruler. So I'll just lay in a line. And this is a mechanical pencil that I'm using. So the earth we have one word on this line and I try to get them evenly spaced. Yes, you can measure them out if you want. I am not that particular myself. I have a tendency to eyeball stuff all the time. And 
I think the more you eyeball stuff, uh, the better you get at it, actually. And then I know that this fourth line, I'm only going to need about that much because I'm going to print his name rather small. So you can mark out kind of your center point, you know, and if you have written this out on a scrap piece of paper and I'm looking all over for a scrap piece of paper, and I found one. So the earth laughs in flowers. So I would probably one, two, three, four, five. So I've got six letters here and I would probably kind of start on my second line with the word laughs. And, you know, if I want to be super um, picky about it and start from there. And like I said, I am really not a letterer and you can do this with, um, you can write it out, um, not in script, you know, you can just print it. And, you know, as I'm looking at it, maybe that is what I will do. I kind of actually think though that it, you can see that my eraser is picking up a little bit of this watercolor. It's not making me happy. So I just wanted a little bit more of a slant on it, maybe a little more spread out. And I can count my letters to my top line and I actually still really don't like that. Yes, folks, I took a calligraphy class. Anyway. Right. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine characters. So I probably am going to start this a little bit over here. The earth laughs in not perfect, but that's going to work for me. And then I'm going to print Ralph. Emerson Waldo. Now, after you have um, gone over this with ink, let it dry before you erase anything. And when I say let it dry, let it really dry. Don't be impatient like me. You can give this plenty of time to dry. So I am going to pick a pen that has this kind of a brush tip on it. And I've got a couple of lettering pens that I can show you. And these are made by Tombow and these have the same kind of tip. One has a little bit more of a flexible tip than the other one, but I really like these type of pens because you can get a really nice thin line by holding the pen up and then you can, as you're coming down on the letter, push down to get a thicker stroke. I'm not doing that today. And the reason I'm not doing that is because I have a tendency to mess up because I am, like I said, I am not a letterer um, by any stretch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write this out in cursive and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna thicken up all of the down strokes. So here goes.
Okay. So now that <laughs> I have to laugh. So now that I um, have finished the lettering and we're almost <laughs> done with this, I have noticed that it's Ralph Waldo Emerson and I have reversed the two. So instead of panicking, uh, we're going to, this is a great learning opportunity for myself as well. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of think of a way to fix this because even though this is in my journal, actually because it's in my journal, I would probably leave it. But since I'm filming this tutorial for you and I've screwed up, I'm actually going to show you how I would fix this. And this is really what art is all about because I have done stuff before anything from, you know, you get so intent on what you're writing out that you're not paying any attention, obviously, to what you're writing. So I'm going to show you exactly what I would do with this. And I think what I may do is take some either white acrylic or I have okay so what I've decided to do is I have some white acrylic gouache and you can use acrylic or gouache or white ink anything that was opaque and I'm gonna make this I'm gonna cover this up with white but I'm gonna do it in a way where it looks intentional I hope so let's see what happens with this. And this is nice. Um, this Liquitex acrylic gouache comes in this little squirty bottle. And let's see, I'll have to take this and just lay some in here and get a brush. And I think what I'm gonna do and this is kind of a, kind of like a cat's tongue, filbert kind of cheapy little brush. Make sure that I have clean water. The water that I've got is kind of tinted yellow. So I will grab a jar of clean water. And this is fairly clean. I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. Like I said, I want this to be opaque, so I don't want my uh, brush to be completely... Uh, I don't want to wet this to the point where it's going to be transparent. Actually, what I might do is I might add in a little bit of this purple watercolor, and I'm going to just kind of... We're going to add in... I'm just going to add in some little flowers and I'm kind of pushing so that the um, tip of the brush makes like a little bit of a um, texture at the end. And I don't want this to be like super in your face. Obviously we're doing this to correct an error. So. And stuff like this happens all the time and it's never a reason to throw anything in the garbage. I mean, unless I've had a cat that I used to work in pastels and I made the mistake of laying one of my paintings on the table and I was just learning and it was a, a landscape scene with a lot of um, blue sky in it. And I had a, he's like a, um, a tabby cat and I saw him walking, <laughs> I saw him walking and he had one entire side that was blue. He had laid on the table and rolled in my painting. So, I mean, unless it's something like that, where there really is no way to come back from it. You know, you have to completely start over. Um, most everything else can be fixed in some way. And I found that these, these kinds of things with paint and making mistakes like this, this is how you learn. And these fixes and these creative solutions, this may lead to something 
you know, I like mixing in watercolor with acrylic gouache and painting and then going over it with white, you might come up with something that you think looks really good, really cool, you know, that you never ever would have thought to do if you hadn't messed up in the first place. So in order to balance this out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some up here with a little bit of that purple too. And I'm doing it because I want it, like I said, I want it to look intentional. And I've got to add a little water to this. Purple. And I'm trying to be kind of careful because I still have, um, I'm going to have to add some down here now too. And this is turning into, you know, a true mixed media piece then. And we'll bring some over here. And after this is dry, I am going to go back over and write his name correctly. Let's just hope I remember to do it the right way. So this has been a lesson in, um, you know, creative solutions and how to make this all work together design-wise. I think we're okay. And I don't think it's like so over the top that and I might go ahead and soften some of this stuff down here. I'm going to give this a quick blow dry and then we'll go ahead and write the name back in again. Okay, so, so this is dry. And I'm going to go back in and I can still kind of see through this. This is why I'm not a tattoo artist. Okay. So that's done, and I think I'm going to go and just do a couple of little sketchy lines so we get the idea. Obviously, these are flowers. Okay, and at this point, I think that we can safely erase our pencil lines. This should be more than dry after hitting this with a blow dryer. And if the camera is shaking, I apologize. Okay, now that this is erased, what I'll do is I'll go back in and do this kind of what they call fake calligraphy technique that is um, just thickening up lines on the natural downstroke. So I would just go in and kind of draw these in.
so that's a little bit closer to each other than I would like but again this is my journal so we are going to not be so hard on ourselves but I am going to I have some gel pens I'm gonna add some white into here and I have my acrylic gouache still wet and waiting to go if this doesn't uh, do what I want it to do but I am probably just going to I'm just going to add some little white dots here and there to kind of these aren't really as opaque as I would like so we're going to try our acrylic gouache and I have this little bitty brush and I'm just going to go in here and kind of add some little white accents where I want. Maybe in the center of the flower. Yes, I do use my fingers. I'm not liking what this brush is doing, so I'm going to go back to my gel pen. I'm going to try the other gel pen. Try to go into the areas that are a little darker so that you actually have some contrast. And that's not playing nice. So I'm going to use this paint marker. And this is a Sharpie and this is a paint pen and it's an extra fine. And I am sad to say that they do not make these anymore. Um, there are other alternatives out there as far as paint pens go. I just don't know. I don't think that they make the fine tip one anymore. I could be wrong. I'm just going to go in here and add some dots to the lettering to kind of lighten it up a little bit. I like the way it looks. And this just goes to show you that you can you can do whatever you want in your journal and it's supposed to be about fun it's not supposed to be you know beating yourself up for making mistakes because if that were the case i would spend most of my time beating myself up and that doesn't sound like fun to me so i'm going to go ahead and continue to add some little white dots in here i think it just kind of gives it another added element and you can make them as big as you want or as small. You can also go in here and add, you know, you can add some squiggly lines. And this piece is already pretty abstract and sketchy. And so if you add in some white lines in here, you know, it, I think it just adds to the piece really. Or you can maybe add some accents to these flowers like that. And kind of just go whatever with whatever feels right to you and whatever you like. I like to use an odd number of dots, usually like three or five. if I'm doing them in a grouping, so. Something else that you can do is use um, some metallic ink or metallic gel pens or watercolor. There are a lot of metallic watercolors out there these days, and you can add a little bit more bling to your piece if that's what you want to do. You can go in and add some dots. You can take this as far as you want. It's really about experimentation and play. So I hope you had fun doing this and I plan on doing some more free tutorials. I may not do them all kind of in real time with you, but uh, I will be offering more free tutorials soon. And thanks for joining me. I hope to see you. Much love.